This week, we're kicking off a new series called Average Labs. Now, what this series is designed for is informative content that answers a lot of the common questions we get. Now, that could be for new shooters or just for your average shooter, but these are questions that we see often over and over again, whether it's in our DMs, in our comment section, or just with people search for across the board. So this week, we're talking about zeros, and I reached out to Joe Dawson from Bruiser Industries and talked with him at length about this when we were doing long range stuff, but I said, hey man, could I get your input on some zeros in regards to the average shooter, the average user? Because we get a lot of questions like, hey, what distance do you zero your LPDO at? What distance do you zero your red dot at? And as I was talking to this with Joe, one of the things he pointed out is that people don't take into account how optic height affects your zero and it affects your holds at different distances. So Joe's gonna talk at length about this. I will provide some graphs in here that will help you guys see and some of the numbers as well so that you guys can pause, screen grab, do whatever you gotta do so you can look at those numbers if you want more information. Uh, just remember, these are just to give you an image or like to give you a, a rough idea of the ideas or the concepts that he's talking about. These aren't gonna be exact for everybody. Like you have to take into account your optic, your optic height, the round you're using, the velocity you're getting, your barrel length, and the environmental. So all those are gonna be factors into what Joe talks about. Uh, but I think this will give you a rough idea and hopefully clear clear up some of the questions that we get in regards to zero for, for a lot of you guys. So with all that, I will turn it over to Joe. So talking with Jimmy, <clears throat> he asked me to explain <clears throat> the interplay between uh, riser height and zero distance. And so the main thing I think people have to understand is what is a zero? A zero is an intersect between your line of sight or point of aim, the dot in your red dot, the center of the crosshair in your reticle, whatever it is, it's the intersect between that and a trajectory. Now we mechanically set this by adjusting our optic, but what you're doing is you're creating an intersect between a straight line and a line that is created by an arc or the trajectory of the bullet. So something similar to this. So we're intersecting, this is the zero distance right here, zero distance. The zero distance is the intersect right here between the trajectory of the bullet and your line of sight driven by the scope. That angle and that of the intersect creates the height at which the max ord or the highest point of the bullet's path in relationship to the point of aim the height of that is dictated by how close you bring that in and so what happens is is if you have a 25 meter zero what has a tendency to happen is is a with a 25 meter zero on a regular ar-15 or scoped rifle if you were to bring that in you create this really high max ord and so over your point of aim you're going to have your round going between anywhere from five to 10 inches over your actual point of aim. So if you were aiming at a target that was six inches tall and you aim in the middle of the target, you're going to have impact or miss that is six, five to six inches over the top of that or over the top of your point of aim, which on a small target would be a miss. And these distances usually happen between 150 and 200 yards, get, given a whole bunch of factors. But, and then the farther you push that out, the lower you make that arc. And so the lower the max ord is going to be. And so something like a 50, 5200, which again is based off one bullet, one velocity, one barrel length, et cetera, uh, to even a hundred yard zero actually becomes really relevant, especially. So what you're doing is you're decreasing that angle of the intersect. Now, what also increases that angle? Lately, what we see is we see these things, what I call the rise of the riser. Everybody's seeing these really high risers for red dots. And what happens is, is you, as you increase that height, what you're doing is even at a, at a close zero, you're increasing that angle, which creates an even higher max ord. And so if you're really used to running a one five riser, you know, one seven uh, center of optic type riser, and you go to like a 193 or a 226 center of optic riser, what you're doing is you're creating a much more extreme angle of that intersect. And so what people don't realize is the impact that has past your zero. And so what used to be a five or six inch max ord with like a really high riser, like a unity riser or a the Knight's Arm at one, there's a bunch of them. The higher you get that, like, yeah, from zero to 25, you close that gap faster. But what you do is that like 150 yards now, 180 yards, you can end up with like a 15 to 18 to 22 inch max ord. So from where you're aiming at 150 or 200 yards, your round's actually 22 inches high. And so when you start shooting at like a regular 
BC size steel, if you're shooting, especially if you're using a magnifier or something else or an LPBO, your round is significantly over your point of aim. And so that, and as you push that zero out, so you go to a 50 yard zero or a hundred yard zero, the increase in that height of the riser, it affects that max ord significantly less. And so what we see is, is people who are fixed to the close in zeros have a significantly larger impact caused by the height of the riser over somebody that would have necessarily a 50 or a hundred yard zero. So for me personally on my 11 and a half inch MCX, I tend to run a hundred yard zero. I will look at my ballistic calculator and see what I, where I should be at 50, verify at 100. And then that basically puts me plus or minus a couple inches out to about 200, which for an 11 and a half inch gun works for me. And then I think I'm about nine inches low at 300. So some things to think about. Zeros are important and ballistic applications give us the opportunity to use the information that we have presented to us to make informed decisions. And that's kind of what I'm really looking for for people to get out of this. So I'm Joe with Bruiser Industries. Hopefully this works for Jimmy and I'm out. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully that answers some of the questions that you guys had. Hopefully that clarified some things in regards to zeros and riser height. Now I will say after having this conversation with Joe and after shooting with him out in Oregon and practicing things here, I have moved over to a 100 yard zero across the board on all my rifles, whether it is a scoped rifle or if it is even just with a red dot. So for example, uh, this EOTech is zeroed at 100. Now, as I talked about in the offset dot video, I run this also at a 100 yard zero simply because it's a backup site. So I have them at the same, so I don't have to memorize two different holds. But in a podcast, I believe it was Kyle the Four was he was, I forget what podcast it was on, and I'm sorry if it was your podcast. Uh, if you guys know what it is, link it down below. But uh, Kyle the Four, I believe it was in a podcast, said that when the, the war in Afghanistan first started, that they were having issues with guys not being effective with their 5.56 out at distances like 100 to 150 yards because they were so used to zeroing at 25 yards that when they went to shoot out at 100 yards, their holds were off. And so like, you know, it would take them five, six, seven rounds to get on target at 100 yards, 150 yards. And so he said it's really important to match your zero to what is relevant to your your common engagement distance. Now, what does that mean for us as the average shooter, the average gun owner, average gun enthusiast. So this all comes down to application, right? We say this a lot, you know, application matters, context matters, what it is that you're doing matters. If you're preparing for some into the world or whatever, um, you know, take into account what that average distance of engagement might look like. Uh, but if you're shooting something like competition or three gun, something like a two optic like this, what would make more sense? Like if this was a three gun gun for me, I would put this at probably like a 25 yard zero and put this at a hundred yard zero because that allows me to switch from my most common engagement distances, right? So using the smaller optic at a closer distance where I have a larger um, target picture and I have a little bit more leeway, I don't have to be so precise. And then if I was running a scope or even just a red dot, putting it at a hundred, so if I have to make those more precise shots and I know what my hold is at those distances, I can do that. If you're a SWAT officer, if you're a local LE, if you're somebody who mainly shoots at close distances uh, when you're doing uh, warrants or if you're going into buildings and, and it's all CQB engagements, the zero you pick is gonna be different or you're gonna be have to really know what your offset is, like your, your height over bore and make sure that you have that drilled in so you know what it is. So take all that into consideration, keep that in mind. Uh, but I think for most people, most people watching this video and for most average gun owners, a 100 yard zero is gonna be fine, no matter what optic height you have. But again, it all comes down to what your application is and what you are trying to get out of it, what you are trying to do. And as Joe said, make sure you use ballistic apps. And if you have questions about that, go go ask Joe, go follow Bruiser Industries. He's great about answering DMs, great about answering questions. He does lives quite a bit. There's a ton of information on his, his account that you can go back and search through and see. But he talks about a lot of free ballistic apps or cheap ballistic apps that you can get that will help you figure out some of these numbers and make sense of all of them based on the round that you're using, based on the barrel length you have, and based on your optic height. So he's happy to do all that. Uh, we're going to do some more, more content with Joe in the future, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, hopefully this helps you guys, and if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. Make sure that like and subscribe. Karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, and if you have something you want to see on Average Labs, something, a question that you have, something you want answered, leave it in the comments below. I think that's good. Good there. I hope so. Oh. I might have a caffeine problem.
Gotta mute this in case Taylor calls. No, that's wrong. No.